on behalf of our chapter, I'd like to thank you for joining us today as we have the privilege of honoring and remembering two of Litchfield's most illustrious patriots that relentlessly served our nation's fight for independence, Governor Oliver Walcott Sr. and Colonel Benjamin Talmadge. Participating in today's ceremony are the Oliver Walcott Sr. branch of the Sons of the American Revolution and their color guard, the Charles Merriman Society of the Children of the American Revolution, the 1st Litchfield Artillery Regiment with cannon, and thanks to them for their PA system, which helps enormously, Morgan Weir, American Legion Post 27 of Litchfield, Tyler Seward Kubish, American Legion Post 44 of Bantam, and Amvets Post 24 of Torrington. At this time, I would like to ask our chaplain, Jerry Ackerman, to please provide an invocation for us. Thank thee, O God, for the daring of our forefathers in reclaiming their ancient rights. We thank thee, too, for the hero's valor, the patriot's devotion, the prophet's vision, and for all the blood and sweat and toil by which our freedom was purchased. As we commemorate our national independence, accept again the declaration of our everlasting dependence upon thee. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. I'd like to ask everyone to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The words are on the reverse of your program. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please join me in reciting the American's Creed, which is also on the back of the program. I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the governed, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity, for which American patriots sacrificed their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. At this time, I'd also like to introduce two very special guests that have honored us with their presence today. We have in attendance our New York State Regent, Denise Van Buren, and her son, Brett Van Buren. And I'd like to ask them to please step forward for some brief words. Thank you, Judy, so much. And thank you to all of the members of this wonderful chapter of the DAR. What an honor it is for me to be here. Mary Talmadge, Mary Floyd Talmadge was the daughter of William Floyd, who was one of the four signers of the Declaration of Independence who hailed from the state of New York. He was a member of the Suffolk Militia. He was a landed gentry property owner um, on Long Island in New York. And when his property was seized by the British during the Revolution, he crossed the Sound and stayed here in Connecticut for seven years, but in fact represented the state of New York in the Continental Congress throughout the entire period of the Revolution. Following the war, he moved to upstate New York in the Mohawk Valley, and he is buried there in Warnerville, New York. And I'd invite you, if you've ever liked to take a little pilgrimage, to visit his gravesite there. Uh, we also, of course, gather today to honor the memory of another signer of the Declaration of Independence, a man named Oliver Walcott, uh, with whom my own local DAR chapter has a connection. Oliver Walcott, as you all well know, um, was not only a governor of the state of Connecticut, but was also a general during the American Revolution. He fought in the Hudson Valley area which is where my son and I left this morning to join you today. He also fought um, with um, Horatio Gates, and who was the victor at Saratoga. And in the state of New York, we are about to place a marker on the grave of General Horatio Gates in New York City in October. Believe it or not, he lies in an unmarked grave in Trinity Churchyard in Lower Manhattan. So um, the, the general under whom your General Walcott fought during the American Revolution at Saratoga has no marker like this. And so how fitting it is that here in Litchfield, Connecticut, that you have preserved and saluted the memory of Oliver Walcott all these years. It was Oliver Walcott's great-granddaughter who had moved to the Hudson River Valley who started my DAR chapter in 1896. And my son is holding up a picture of her. Her name was Catherine Walcott, later Catherine Walcott Verplank. 
and I'm delighted to tell you that she carried on this Walcott tradition of citizenship when she moved to the Hudson River Valley. Not only did she found our DAR chapter and go on to become a New York State Regent, the position that I now hold from 1902 until 1905, but Catherine Walcott was also a woman before her time. She was the first uh, woman elected in our county to our local school board during the uh, during World War One. She helped the Red Cross, and she was really a remarkable citizen who I think carried forward Oliver Walcott's commitment to this country and its founding. Um, I also brought today just something I'll, I'll display later in the event that you're interested. It is a, a promissory note that's signed by Oliver Walcott, Jr., along with several other uh, prominent um, Connecticut uh, patriots of the American Revolutionary War period, including Samuel Willis, whose wife, Ruth, um, the Hartford chapter of the DAR is named for. And um, I'm delighted to have an opportunity to come here to Connecticut and share this. Someone gave this to me as a gift because they knew that uh, Oliver Walcott Jr. had signed it and our DAR was connected to, in fact, the Walcott family. So what a joy it is for me to be here to bring greetings from the New York daughters and to salute all of you for coming out on the 4th of July to celebrate the true meaning of Independence Day. I challenge you to take the spirit that you feel as an American today and carry it forward for the rest of the year to remember the obligations that come with being a citizen of the, the finest world, the, the finest nation that the world has ever known, and the obligations that come to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. I thank you, Madam Regent, for allowing us to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We really consider it an honor and a privilege to have you in attendance. And thank you for that additional information. That was really, really wonderful and for bringing both the picture and the document. That's fantastic. Okay. Signing the Declaration of Independence was an act of treason, and the men who signed it pledged to each other lied pledged to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. They put everything on the line and were literally putting the noose around their own necks by doing so. Such a man was Oliver Walcott Sr. He was born in Windsor on December 20th, 1726, and graduated from Yale in 1745. As a young man, he commanded a company of volunteers in the Northern Army, fighting in the war against the French. He was 25 years old when he became a resident of Litchfield and held office of sheriff for over 20 years. Oliver Walcott Sr. was a representative to the legislature five times between 1764 and 1770, a member of the council or upper house from 1771 to 1786, and judge of probate for the district of Litchfield from 1772 to 1795. If your family had resided in this area during that time, he was the probate judge for their estates. He was the judge of the Court of Common Pleas from 1773 to 1786, as well as a member of Continental Congress from 1775 to 1784. During, during the early part of the Revolutionary War, he was commissioned as a Brigadier General, and Congress appointed him a Commissioner on Indian Affairs for the Northern Department. He was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, which was the equivalent of signing his own death warrant. After the Declaration of Independence was read in New York City, a mob stormed Bowling Green in the Lower Wall Street area and toppled the statue of King George III that was there. The statue was made of lead coated with a fine layer of gold leaf. At that point, after toppling it, the king's head was severed from the body and supposedly put on a pike and shipped to London. When Oliver Walcott Sr. saw the fallen statue, he took the pieces and had it carted back to his home here in Litchfield. In the orchard behind his house, which still stands, he put his wife, children, and local ladies to work melting the statue and making bullets. It is reported that 42,088 bullets were made, with his daughters Laura making 8,378 of them, daughter Marianne making 10,790, and his son Frederick making 936 bullets. Walcott took the bullets to Saratoga, where he fired them and the militia helped defeat Burgoyne and the British troops literally with melted majesty fired at them. In May of 1779, he was elected by the legislature and commissioned by Governor Trumbull as Major General of the Militia of Connecticut. 
In these positions, he rendered the country essential service and was found ever prompt in planning and efficient in the execution of these plans. On the local level, he officiated as a moderator, selectman, and committee man. No man in the state at that time discharged so many and so varied public duties as Oliver Walcott Sr. Both Governor Trumbull and General George Washington had no one else who could achieve the certainty of success in furnishing supplies as Oliver Walcott Sr. could. In 1786, he was elected to the office of Lieutenant Governor of Connecticut and elected annually for a period of 10 years. In May of 1796, he was chosen to be governor of our state, following in the footsteps of his father, Roger Walcott, who was also a governor of Connecticut. He married Laura Collins, and they were blessed with five children, and son Oliver Jr. continued the family legacy by serving both as a governor of Connecticut and later as Secretary of the United States Treasury, and he also is interred directly beside his father in the next burial spot. <clears throat> How remarkable to have three successive generations of governors in the Walcott family. Oliver Walcott Sr. died at his home in Litchfield on December 1, 1797, ending a distinguished career and having held positions on the national, state, and local level simultaneously. In his poem, The Vision of Columbus, written by Jewel Barlow in 1787, he memorialized Oliver Walcott Sr. exclaiming, Bold Walcott urged the all-important cause. With steady hand, the solemn scene he draws, Undaunted firmness with his wisdom joined, nor kings nor world could warp his steadfast mind. Battery two. 